Hello friend, um, this is officially the first episode of Beyond the Strategy podcast in 2024 and I just found it very crazy that I've not spoken to you guys yet since our last episode of season one, I think in October. It's been six months since I spoke to you guys. It's so crazy, isn't it? And I miss you guys so much. I miss interacting with you. I miss listening to your thoughts. I miss reading your comments and all of that. And so I promise that season two is coming to you sooner than you expect. Um, I had to work on a few things. You know, season one was our, our pilot. And so we've made, we've learned a few things. And so we are going to work on that and bring season two to you better than season one because i'm gonna have a few friends conversations that we have on the phone that i want you to listen in so stay tuned don't get bored don't get tired don't move on (laughs) for me stick and stay with me now 2024 um has been quite interesting so far I have been trying to, you know, increase capacity in different aspects of my life. And the spiritual aspects, you know, is one of the key things we talk about on this podcast. And so I want to share a few things with you that I've gathered so far. In the last few months, I've been I've been doing my best to know God for myself, understand the scriptures for myself and not through the stories i heard you know in passing and people and and what people say about them it's been quite interesting and one of the things that hits me um was the death of christ so easter is now very special to me because i understand the depth of the sacrifice and this happened um, when I was studying the book of Hebrews and somewhere in Hebrews 8, Hebrews 9 and 10, the writer spoke about the old covenant and the new covenant and it got me curious that like, what's in the old covenant, what's in the new, co- what does the new covenant say, you know? And so one of the things that I got, um, was that in the old covenant god you know had a promise an agreement with the israelites and that was strictly based on law in the old covenant god was speaking to his people through the prophets um and so that's how moses led the israelites out of egypt and also prophets were the intermediaries between god's people and god the people of God did not have access to the Holy of Holies. And so when you go into the tabernacle, there's a high priest that has access to the Holy of Holies once a year. He enters the Holy of Holies once a year to offer sacrifices on behalf of the people. Which was crazy to me because now we can literally experience, you can go to church and experience the Holy of Holies. You can be in your bedroom worshiping and you experience the Holy of Holies. And so I'm like, oh my God, the new covenant is so um, precious to us and we should not take advantage of it. Like we should not let it, like, why are you not taking advantage of this new agreement that God has with us. In the old agreement, it says that um, the Jesus didn't have to enter the holy place with blood of goats and cows because in the old covenant, you for you to offer the sacrifices, it had to be goats and cows. But and it has to be done on a yearly basis so every year you have to go for your sin to be cleansed and you don't even have direct access to that place and so what jesus did was that it's his blood replaced the blood of the calves and the goats and that was like a one-time thing and immediately 
destroy the old covenant which was based on law and now the new covenant is based on the grace of god this blood has given us access to eternal redemption like eternally we we have access to the holy of holies eternally we've been cleansed of the sin that we have committed <laughs> so in the old covenant the priest was the betweener between god and his people and so i cannot have direct access to god um just because and so now there was the the prophets were the betweeners then the high priest came and then jesus came and then jesus became the one that's mediating between god and his children and now when jesus before jesus died he was having a conversation with the disciples when he told them that i'm gonna go away very soon <clears throat> why is my voice doing that all of a sudden <laughs> i'm going i'm gonna go away very soon and the disciples were so sad like why do you have to go you don't have to go and he's like you don't understand how like the the gravity of the gift i'm gonna give you after i leave like as i'm here i have to do the healing healing has to go through me and um, sins have to be forgiven by me and i can't serve everybody like imagine me sitting in a car waiting for jesus to visit ghana and then i'll go for a a conference to be able to access him and um, hear his word but he's saying that when i leave i'm gonna leave with you the holy spirit and he's with you like everywhere you go and that is like a direct access to the holy of holies do you understand now in the new covenant which is in hebrews 8 it says that um god made a new agreement with the people of israel and with the people of judah and he said that i will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts i'll be their god and they will be my people that's one of the things the new um the new covenant says and so reading reading these things in hebrew and also you know it just gave me a better understanding of the love god has for us in in the sense that Jesus' death was premeditated. It's not something that he thought of and said that you know what, um, since these people are struggling, they are suffering, and all, let me send so let me send my son to die for them. That that has been the intent from the beginning, when um, in Genesis when he created the world. Um, it's been interesting very interesting understanding the overwhelming love of god i think for the longest time i have understood that i i knew i've heard that god loves me but i'm now sort of understanding the gravity or the depth of the love god has for us his children and the lengths he will go to ensure that we are fine um in one of my bible studies i read that the love we think we've experienced on earth like maybe the love you've experienced from your earthly parents the love you've experienced from your husband the love you've experienced from your boyfriend or girlfriend or your wife you know that oh my god this person loves me um the people that can relate most to this is um the people that have kids and so your your daughter you know you love your daughter or your son and you can go to war for them but the bible says that that love that you know and you think you feel is a drop in the ocean as compared to the love god has for us like can you like there's no way um, in your entire stay on earth would you be able to grasp how wide how deep his love for us is that's also scripture I'll probably look for it and we'll paste it on there but god is good god has been really good and that's and that's one of the things that i am leaning in this year that god really loves me and everything that he's he's done for me 
is premeditated like my success and uh, my the grace my um the, the the gifts that he's giving me are all premeditated so now when you are when you're moving when you're moving in the on earth I, I I want you to move with that confidence that solid confidence that you have a father who loves you and will go to all the extreme ends to ensure that you are okay and it's the same love that makes him pursue us relentlessly like it's that same love that he will make him leave the 99 to come after you the one even if you falter it's the same love that would have him welcome you back in open arms when you even feel like you know i've been doing the wrong things i've been sinning i've been backsliding he loves us so much so that he doesn't reject us when we reject him right he's like just then he's eager to have us back he's eager to have conversations with us and it's been it's for me it's been like really mind-blowing how god moves how he operates how sometimes he will give you an assignment or he will leave an impression in your heart and he's already <laughs> he's already spoken to people he's already given people a mandate to help you and so that assignment you've been given and you think that oh my god this is so hard to do he's already sorted it out he just needs you to move you know in direction of what he's called you to do and so that 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 has been me um and just basking in the love that god has for us his children and i've been even more curious to know how he works not just how his hand works in terms of the things he can give me as a provider but to understand his ways you know and his spirit how his spirit moves and um the fact that the holy spirit is a very big advantage for us like i can't believe like i can't imagine life without the holy spirit's com um, company like there are so many decisions i've made now that were heavily influenced by the holy spirit and i saw the the impacts that made and i there are also decisions i made without the holy spirit and i saw how that ended or decisions i made just by shaking off what the you know the impressions the holy spirit was leaving on me and then i saw how that ended and so this year um i'm hoping that um i glean more and more um in the word of god and speaking of the word of god i've been studying jesus and um, his ministry because here yeah, easter so I, I needed to know the journey to the cross for myself again not through um sermons and not through the bible <laughs> um sunday school stories that we had and one of the things that i learned from matthew 7 matthew 7 um 24 it says that therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended the floods came the winds blew and the, and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it this is the king james version i think i'll read the amplified too so it says that so everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man a far-sighted practical and sensible man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods and torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against that house yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish into bracket stupid man 
who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods and torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great and complete was its fall and immediately the song i heard <laughs> was the one that we all sing passionately um uh, uh, christ is my fair foundation we sing that song with so much conviction but are we really hearing his words and acting on them it's one thing to hear his words it's one thing to read his word and one of the primary ways in fact the most primary way of hearing his word is hearing him is by reading his word i am reading the word but am i acting on it that is the only way we can build the, the firm foundation right so we can have the hope that christ is our firm foundation we can have the conviction we can sing with all our might and even be crying <laughs> But you are not hearing him and you are not acting on it i'm also guilty of this you know when you know things get hard when a situation looks so tough mine is to crawl in bed cover myself with cloth and just be there meanwhile my word is there the bible is there the thing that's supposed to strengthen me the thing that's supposed to serve as a sword in on this battleground i've neglected it and so you can sing that song for a thousand years and the rain will come but your fall will even be greater because you did not build it um, on the right foundation and you did not act on what you had and that was so profound for me it was like a wake-up call and now i i like i I hear the song in a very different light that every time i hear the song it's a reminder to go back to the word of god so yeah 2024 has been this and more um i'm getting a lot more from the word um there's been um interesting activities um you know that retreating is also one key thing for me there's been a couple of retreats so far with amazing experiences and i can't wait to share them with you very soon on season two um if you've listened to this episode so far and you've not hit the subscribe button i really do not know if you like me or not <laughs> let's not be dramatic but yeah kindly hit the subscribe button kindly 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 hit the subscribe button if you are listening on apple podcast or spotify google podcast wherever you listen to to your podcast kindly leave a review leave a comment leave a question let me feel the love okay <laughs> in the comment section and please go on youtube and subscribe to the channel so that you are notified whenever we upload i promise that season two is coming sooner than you expect all right i'll see you in another episode and don't forget to share this with somebody you love okay bye Mwah.